my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got a little book talk video to share with you guys and today we're talking about Unraveling Oliver by Liz Nugent. Can you hear that? It's my daughter practicing her flute. I love listening to that. Anyway, Unraveling Oliver. I picked this book up because I had heard some buzz around the internet about it having a really intense first line and I wanted to read it for myself. So I'm going to share with you the first line. So chapter one begins, I expected more of a reaction the first time I hit her. So it's like, Whoa. this book is marketed as a psychological thriller. But I would have to say that I disagree with that. Um, thriller? No. There's definitely some psychological things going on, but it seems almost more of a portrait of this man as seen from many different eyes. So Oliver is our main character, as the title would imply, and it starts off from his point of view. As we see, he's just... Um, abused his wife and we don't know why and we don't know anything about him or her or their relationship. The first chapter goes on and then it ends with um, the second time I hit Alice I just couldn't stop. I'm very sorry about that indeed. I've been in control of my life since I was eight years old and, lo and to lose control is a failing. Needless to say, I'm not allowed to visit her in the hospital. It's silly, really. It's February 2012, so it's been three months now. In her condition, she wouldn't know if I was there or not. So, like, it's a heavy hitter of a first chapter. From there, we're immediately taken to another person's perspective, and then another person's perspective, and another person's perspective. Not of those instances, because nobody knows about that instant. You know, it was in their home alone, but people's um, opinions of Oliver, what people think of him, the run-ins they've had, what kind of person they think he is. And they're all sort of telling these tales as they've heard um, from the newspaper that this has happened. Because as we see there in the end of the first chapter, she's in the hospital, things are not going well for her. So what we learn about Oliver is that he is a world famous author. He writes children's books. And in fact, that's how he met his wife, Alice. Um, they were teamed up and she was the illustrator of his books. We gather that Oliver's very handsome, very charming. Um, there's just something about him. Life has um, recently been fairly easy for him um, because of his looks and charm and the station in life that he's sort of created for himself through his books. Um, we learn about growing up, we learn that as a child he was, he spent a lot of time in a boarding school. Um, at first we wondered like, is he an orphan? Why was he in the boarding school? And then we learned that he knew who his father was. He lived with his father for a few years um, until he was I think about seven or eight years old and then his father remarried and that's when his father shipped him off to the boarding school like for 365 days a year. He doesn't go home for Christmas. He doesn't go home for holidays. He's there all the time. When school's out of session, he stays with the priests who run the school. And we learn that his dad went on to have another child with his new wife. So we spend a lot of time wondering like, who was his mother? Why is she not around? Um, for a long time, we, we just get a bunch of rumors from what people think because um, at the time that um, Oliver was conceived, his father was a priest. So there was thoughts that maybe his mother had been a prostitute or who knows what, what she had been. Um, we do later find that out, who she was, and she was not a prostitute. 
So we're learning from other people's point of view who he is and who Alice is. One thing though I will say that I wish had happened is I wish we had gotten a chapter narrated by Alice herself. I would love to know a bit more about her, but we really don't. And we don't even really get to know that much about his relationship with Alice. We know that throughout it he had many affairs, one that went 20 years long because by the time we by the time Oliver snaps and we meet him, they're in their late 50s, early 60s, I'm guessing. I'm, you know, trying to piece together the, the timeline. I'm thinking late 50s. So he's had a 20 year long on and off affair with a neighbor and we get her perspective in some of this. We find out um, how that ended for them. We get the perspective of an ex-boyfriend of Alice's who was just madly in love with her. One of the other things about Alice that we do know about her is that she had a brother, Eugene, who was um, very disabled, like learning disabled, physically disabled. And this past boyfriend of hers, Barney, he just, he adored Alice and he adored her brother. Whereas for, with Oliver, he kind of, you know, Eugene is just a nuisance to him. And eventually he convinces Alice to put him in a home. And that's just heartbreaking and it's heartbreaking to read about and it's heartbreaking for her because you know she loves her brother and she really felt felt a sense of obligation to care for him but Oliver just made that impossible for her. So then we begin to learn about a ex-girlfriend that Oliver had and her name was Laura and we learn that um, him and Laura and Laura's brother spent a summer away in France. Um, they're from Ireland as well the author is Irish so they go and they spend a lot of time in uh, summer in France and with a family staying on a vineyard where they do work Oliver befriends the um, family most particularly the grandfather and the grandson of this family the family consists of the grandfather his daughter and then his daughter's son and Oliver really becomes attached to them and um, he looks to the grandfather sort of as a father figure and he develops a real soft spot for this grandson or at least as much as he can because <laughs> as the story is unraveling we're really seeing that Oliver is a major sociopath if not psychopath and it's just it's heavy and he's he's really dark but again like I say the book itself isn't really a thriller it's more a portrait of this person and the thing that kind of really got to me um, was how the whole time we're reading, we're just anticipating what led up to him finally snapping and abusing his wife in such a way that she's now in a coma, probably never going to come out of it. So <laughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give some spoilers so I can talk about what it was that led to that. So if you are interested in reading this book, um, don't watch any further, but I hope you enjoyed. It's a great book. It's beautifully written. It was an interesting story for sure. I just went in really expecting some sort of intense thriller and I didn't really get that. Um, but it's good. It's well written. It's a very interesting story. So now that they're gone, <laughs> let's get into the details. So as I had been saying, um, Oliver became very close with this family. And what, and what finally happens to this family is he ends up accident, well, accidentally on purpose burning the house down. He's crazy, as we've established. So in his mind, what he thought he was going to do was be a hero. So he, throughout the summer, he had been helping the grandfather um, translate and transcribe a bunch of children's stories that he had written for his daughter and for his granddaughter. And um, Oliver absolutely adored doing this with him. And he just, the summer was coming to an end and he really wanted a way to pack a punch and sort of secure himself in this family unit because he loved them so much. So what he does is one night he tries to start a small fire in a wing of the house that he thinks there are no bedrooms in. Um, he starts the fire, he leaves. His plan is he's going to keep an eye on it and when he can start seeing smoke he's going to rush in, put out the fire, be the hero, save the day. Um, that doesn't end up happening and the grandfather and the son 
are killed in the fire. Um, there's this, oh, there's a part where Oliver talks about how he wishes he felt more sadness about it, but instead he feels nothing. It's just emptiness. And that was a little chilling to read. But yes, this, th that hadn't been his intent. It just sort of happened. Not that that makes it any better. It's still horrific and what a crazy process of thinking, but he hadn't meant to hurt anybody. So when he's getting ready to pack up, what he does, because if you remember from earlier, I mentioned that Oliver is a famous author of children's stories. So as he's getting ready to pack up, he takes the stories with him. First, just thinking, you know, he just wants to take them with him and to have a part of this family. So he takes them and then um, years pass and he has them locked away in a box. And then eventually he finds himself in a really tight financial situation and he doesn't know what to do or how to get himself out of it. And in a moment of kind of desperation, he takes them out and he takes the first story and he brings it to a publisher and tries to sell it. And he does. He especially sells it under the sort of contract of being able to write 10 more of the books. And by the time we meet Oliver and Alice, not only is he a world famous children's author, these stories have been turned into films. There's been merch, like it's a whole sort of empire built around these books. So what happens eventually is that later on, um, Oliver's wife, Alice, she goes to France um, on a trip with this other woman to a sort of culinary academy where you can take a class and learn to cook French cuisine. And it just so happens to be at the same place where Oliver had um, spent the summer many, many years ago when he was a young man and where he took the stories from. And if he had paid more attention to his wife and their life, he would have been able to know that and maybe, you know, sort of divert her trip. But she goes and she ends up talking to the woman that owns it. And of course, that's the daughter from many years ago. And they get to talking. And long story short, they unravel. They, they Between the two of them, they piece together the fact that Oliver is the Oliver that she knew back in the day. And his wife is telling her about, you know, what he's up to now, telling her about the stories. Um, the children's books and then the woman's kind of like, oh, that's so weird. My father used to write children's books and then it just sort of snowballs and they figure out what he's done. And so this is what leads up to the moment of Oliver losing his mind and hitting her once and then pummeling her until she was unconscious is one day he comes home from work or wherever he is and she's got the box that contains the books, like the locked box of the original copies of um, the grandfather's stories on the table. And she's just like, you liar, you liar. You stole these, you're such a, who are you? I don't even know you. And that's what sets him off. I had honestly been waiting for something really, really intense to set him off. But, but it just seemed like with so many lies, so much deception, so much everything, there could have been a way for him to talk himself out of it. But for whatever reason, he just snaps. Or even if he had told her the truth that he loved these people and then in a moment of desperation, he didn't know what else to do. So I don't know, that was kind of a like, oh, that's what causes it moment to me. I, I, I don't know what I'd been expecting, but I'd been expecting some sort of big, something just more. It seems like that he could have, he could have wormed his way out of it somehow. I don't know. <laughs> but like I said, I really enjoyed the story. Liz is a um, fantastic writer. I love the cover. I just, it's beautiful. Um, Unraveling Oliver is an excellent title. That's exactly what happens throughout the book. And if you like, you know, sort of character studies, especially on someone that's a little darker, um, I think you'd love this book. So if you've read it, please let me know down in the comments what you thought of it. And uh, if you do read it, I hope you enjoy. So now, as is customary, it's Friday here on my channel. I wanted to do a quick shout out. All right. So today's shout out goes to Sean over at Bits of Real Panther. 
Um, I absolutely love Sean's channel. Uh, he's got a lot of funny content. He's got this really dry sort of sense of humor that I just love. He puts up a lot of helpful information with regards to YouTube and lots of other kinds of things. He creates a lot of beautiful, beautiful original music. He's very supportive, and I just, I know you won't regret it if you go and check him out. So if you do, let him know I sent you, and I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Bye.